Hello. Oh, no way, bro. <laughs> I'm Francis Foster. Oh, oh, come on, dog. You got to do better than that. I agree with you. Thank you. Sorry, man. Yeah, there was just something. There's something great about having fucking nothing, you know? Because mm. nobody can take anything from you. I didn't want people to see my background right. and where I'm from yeah. and think uh, that that's me. The last people that really anybody felt safe to make fun of in, like, mainstream media felt like... Um, Poor white people, mm. you know. Yeah, like we did it all. <laughs> 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 like laughter will keep you warm, you know. It's like yeah. so if you don't have anything, poor people sit around. They're more connected, you know. Uh, there's not as much sheltering from the world. There's not any like hedges or any gates. All your shits hanging out the window. We don't. Do you guys have like uh, different pets and stuff? Dogs, yeah. 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 What about also hamsters? Yes. Yes. Okay. Theo, we're normal people over there. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anybody could realistically look at me and think that I've never said the wrong thing. <laughs> hey, so what's the one thing? When, not when... bad, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I sat out there and watched, smoked the cigarette out there. Right out there, And boy. that's the one thing no one's talking about. <laughs> huh? And that's the one thing Bro, no one's talking about. there was seven of these women in there. <laughs> I can see why you brought it up. Yeah. Hey, KK, we're advertising the ideal product for you. Hmm, will it be book that explains how anyone who disagrees with powerful Russian men like me must grovel at my feet? Three generations of my family have been super, ultra, light, flyweight, skin and bone-only boxing champion. Uh, not really, mate. We're advertising Manual, which is a men's health company that specializes in hair loss treatments. I have plenty of hair. Not on your head. Good point. It is tragedy that it affects all kissings. I started losing hair at 12, which is very late by Russian standards. All you need to do is fill out a free questionnaire and Manuel will refer you to one of their licensed clinicians and they will then provide you with only clinically proven, medically backed hair loss treatments based on your needs. No longer will you be doomed to looking like a malnourished, Russian gangster. This is incredible news. The treatments are effective in 9 out of 10 men. Join over 100,000 men who use manual to treat their hair loss. They have an 180 day money back guarantee. So it's risk free. Don't suffer in silence. Get it sorted. I will take manual and soon I will have beautiful thick men like Russian pop star Sergei Saksamov. I can't believe you made up some that. <laughs> You're such a <laughs> <laughs> Stop hair loss now before it's too late by using the code TRIGGER5010 or clicking the link in the description for 50% off your first order and 10% off your second. That is TRIGGER5010 for 50% off first order and 10% off second order. Goodbye. Hello. Oh, no way, bro. <laughs> no fucking way, dog. <laughs> That's not real, huh? <laughs> Man, what is... Look, we do a formal intro, yeah, all right? Yeah, yeah, Let, yeah. Let's just get it over with, yeah. all right? <laughs> That's how we normally start our interviews. Let's get it over with. Right. Hello <laughs> and welcome to Trigonometry. I'm Francis Foster. Oh, come on, dog. <laughs> you got to do better than that. I agree with you. Thank you. Sorry, man. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. You know what you're doing. But you got to try harder, bro. <laughs> All right. So okay. I get... All right. Hello, and welcome to Trigonometry. I'm Francis Foster. <laughs> I'm Constantine Kissing. And this is a show for you if you want honest conversations with fascinating people. Our brilliant guest today is already taking the piss out of us. It's the amazing American comedian, Theo Vaughn. Welcome Bro, to Trigonometry. You guys have, we call it autism. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you guys call it, bro, but we got it over here. Everybody's got it. Everybody's got it. Every celebrity has it when they have a movie coming out. Right. 
They get it like the week before, bro. They get autism and then the movie comes out. <laughs> and then they fix it or whatever, you know? But you guys definitely, bro. Uh, how, what makes you think we have no, autism? autism? Oh, I grew up around a ton of autism, dude. <laughs> we used to have a lot of people, a lot of adult, like in middle age kind of women with their shirts off, yelling stuff. Um, <laughs> that's autism right there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's good to know. It's educational. Yelling at vehicles. Theo, yeah. let me explain something for the viewers because they're not used to seeing us like this. Yeah. Right. Uh, right? Uh, we just did the uh, Joe Rogan show and halfway through the thing, he sparked up a, a massive blunt. Yeah. Okay. So we are a little bit stoned. Yep. And you've been taking the piss out of out of us for the last 20 minutes. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I think you're going to carry on with that. Uh, but listen, uh, you're very famous here in the US. Fewer people know about you in the UK. Uh, and one of your favorite routines that I love is you talk about growing up. Uh, it's a routine about white privilege, but you talk about growing up the way that you did. Yeah. Like, what's your backstory, man? How did? What, what's your story? Mm, my backstory, pretty much. You know, I grew up in Louisiana. So Louisiana is a French territory. It was like a French territory. I think we bought it from France, right? I don't know. If they. I don't know what happened actually, <laughs> but. We lived there when I was young, and it was good, man. You know, a lot of, uh, you know, it was just a lot of like, um, a lot of like, uh, you have hitchhiking and stuff in your yeah. country? Yeah, yeah, man. A lot of people like that, yeah. you know? Right, yeah. A lot of people that are hitchhiking, but they're not leaving. Yeah. They're just staying. Oh, it's, it's, so, it's a place where people end up, basically. Yeah, people end up, people get dropped off, yeah. people hide. Uh, a lot of pirates used to come through there a long time ago in the history. Yeah. And um You didn't go up to that period, right? No, no, no. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm modern day, you know, or semi-modern times. Right, right. But yeah, so I grew up there, man. I had my dad was real old and my mother was regular aged and we grew up there and we had a nice time, pretty much. Not that great. But uh the place was good, a lot of good uh recipes. Yep. And um what else I'm trying to think that you guys would know about. Uh, tell us the stuff you think we don't know about. Just yeah. tell us everything. That I don't think you know about? Yeah. yeah. Well, do you guys have like, um, like, uh, do, do people, do you guys like go on vacation? Sure. Yeah. And what do you call it? Holiday. Holiday. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Let me think about what else. Um, we don't, do you guys have like, uh, different pets and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Dogs. Yeah. 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 What about also hamsters? Yes. Yes. Okay. Theo, we're normal people over there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have the okay. same shit yeah, that you, you do. do. Okay, all right. We well. speak the same language. All right. I mean, it doesn't sound the same when it comes yeah. out of us, yeah. but it's the same yeah. language, I promise you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what else I was trying to, I was going to think about asking you guys, man. Because um, I never knew that much about Britain, to be honest yeah. with you. I like, uh, oh, what about the Welsh? Tell me about that. Right, the Welsh, man. Well, the Welsh are... See, Britain is is tiny compared to America, obviously. Yeah. But it's also got, you know, different countries within the Union, four countries within the Union. <laughs> like so you, four states. Yeah. Like you do. But <laughs> except they speak different languages, Theo. Oh, really? Yeah, so yeah, the Welsh have got their own language. I mean, language, it's more like... <laughs> right, so you've got them. The Irish, the Northern Irish... they've Careful. got Careful. Yeah. Yes. Careful. Mate, mate. You're Irish. No. No, no, but they like blowing shit up, man. Yeah, man. Oh, like Joe Joyce and them boys, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. I don't know who Joe Joyce is, but I'll go with it. And yeah. so they've Let, got Gailey. I don't know who Joe Joyce is. I could be completely... <laughs> He's an overlay. online... Yeah, he fights online. He fights senior citizens online. He fights and they, what? they meet up in parking lots and stuff and fight. It's like senior citizens Okay, so definitely children. not like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Definitely, no, no, no. There, there, there was a big conflict there and they were using bombs to blow shit up. Oh, yeah. Christ. Right. That's why I'm saying to take it easy because I don't want to get blown up. Yeah, right. exactly. Right? So you got, and then is that you got, fair enough? That is more than fair. And then you've got the Scottish... Yeah. And they're just as fucking well, terrible. They're fucked, eh? But they're good. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. great. So yeah. you've got on this tiny island, man, and Northern Ireland over there, you've got all these different cultures and different languages, and they all hate the English. Oh, really? Yeah, man. So that's it. They don't like you guys. Right. No one likes who I mean, I'm theory. originally from Russia, so it's even worse, but yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So you guys are fighting right now too, huh? Yeah. And that's taking forever, huh? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. You'd think they'd get it done quicker. Right. That's crazy, man. Yeah, well, uh, let me think about what else. Theo, tell us about you. Mm -hmm. Your story. Come on, man. Like, what do you mean? Like, let me think about what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> 
let me think. Um, my story is, yeah, I just, I just grew up and, you know, I grew up just like in a regular place, just like a lot of people like betting on like people, like dogs would have babies and people would bet on how much babies they were going to have. And like, um, people, uh, saw a guy die one time in a fire. People threw him in a fire. Um, well, that sounds completely lawless. Just like, sounds like Scotland a little, but like, <laughs> kind of like, but in like, you know, they have a lot of like good food, yeah. but incest. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. It does sound a little bit like Scotland, but <laughs> right. the, I thought the Scottish were wild. That sounds considerably more wild. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard, I mean, I, yeah, the Scottish I've heard are pretty, I heard it's pretty unbelievable over there. Yeah. But um, yeah, so that's, I mean, I guess what else was it like? Well, how did you get into stand up? Mm. I think my dad was just really old when I was a kid, yeah. and so I would make jokes about everything, you know? Mm. Right. I would try to change my reality. That's you interesting. Know? How, I, how, what does that mean, Theo? You'd like to change your reality? Well, I wanted a different reality, you know? I didn't like the reality that I had, and so I wanted something different, you know? And so I wanted to be different or feel different or, you know, have different chance than I thought, felt like I had probably in the world, I felt like I probably didn't have a strong chance. What was that for you? What was what? Why, why did you feel like you didn't have a strong chance? I think just because of where I was from, you know, just like poor, white, tra you know, like not, we weren't trashy, we were like, and we were just like poor, you know, just like, I don't know. People just kind of treat you different. People in the neighborhood don't have as much opportunity. You know, a lot of, not a lot of people kind of get out of there and do pretty well. Yeah, right. So I think, yeah, I think I was like, I want to have a, ch be you know, I want to have a real chance, you know? Yeah. And so I started to find ways to like adjust my reality, mostly with, um, you know, using my imagination or, um, you know, I would like do things like, I don't know, like bike to school so I didn't have to ride the bus from like with the poor kid, just stuff like that, you know? Mm. So, yeah, I don't know. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah that's great. Yeah. Do you know what I find really interesting about that? Is that you, very few people who grow up from that type of background feel have that drive. Do you know what I mean? Because most people, it doesn't matter where they're born into, they look around and they just want to be the same as everyone else for obvious reasons. You think that's true? I think, I believe that. Yeah, yeah, man. And, oh, wow. But you were, you had, were different. Yeah. What was it about that? Who gave you that? Mm. Or how did you get it? Or how did you get it? Damn, that's a good question, man. I think, um, I don't know. I think I just didn't like things so much that they didn't, I didn't have any other, they had to be different, you know? Right. I just, hmm, I don't know. It's a good question, man. I never thought about it, you know? Yeah. I just like, you know, I would get involved in different stuff that seemed like I'd have new opportunities or find good friends who I felt like, you know, weren't going to be stuck in the same spaces. I don't know. I think I just maybe maneuvered well amongst it all, yeah. you know, kind of. Yeah. But I miss it sometimes. I miss just some of the simplicity of it. What do you mean by that, Theo? Just people like, you know, just my mates back then and stuff, you know? Just had a buddy, like I used to work on this farm for a while and I had a buddy who would, he'd take his shirt off and go lay on the concrete after it rained, you mm. know? Just to stay, you know, because he liked the feeling of the concrete on his skin. That's, but that's really interesting because people would look at you and go, oh, this guy is, you know, he's a, he's a comedian, he's successful, he makes good money, he's, he's got everything. And yet you look back at a time where you were growing up poor. Yeah. And you say that you miss it. Yeah, there was just something, there's something great about having fucking nothing, you know? Mm. Cause nobody can take anything from you. Right. Yeah. You know, when you got nothing, you got literally have nothing to fucking lose. Other people say to each other, oh, you got nothing to lose. That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. But when you have nothing, dude, it's just, God, it's nice. Cause you, I mean, you absolutely, you have nothing to lose, man. And there's no, I feel like that's as free as you could feel, yeah. you know? So you felt free, but you also felt a very strong drive to get somewhere, right? Yeah, I think I just didn't, I think there was enough propulsion, like, you know, 
my dad was so old, it was so embarrassing. And, and, and you know, we How were, old was he? He was 70 when I was born. He was born in 1910. Wow. Holy shit. He was a senior citizen. Right. You have that in your, they call it senior yeah, yeah, yeah. citizen? Pensioner, what do you call yeah. it? Pensioner. Pensioner. Pensioners? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's crazy, dude. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, these pensioners, huh? So you, you, your dad was 70 when you were born? He was older, mate. Wow. He was an older guy and he was just, you know, he was getting, you know, older. And so he would, you know, he would, you know, he was just kind of, he would let me drive as soon as I was tall enough, you know, and just, he was kind of a bit lazy. So he would just kind of let me drive him around and stuff, you know, uh -huh. when I was probably 11 and 12, you know, and, um, he What's was, it like? What was it like? He liked to eat peanuts too. And he would let me hold all the shells all the time. <laughs> What's it like being a kid when your dad, like when you said your dad was old, yeah. I, ex I expected like to be like, oh, he had me when he's 40s or early 50s. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, not 70. What was that like being a kid walking into school and your, your dad looks like your granddad? Yeah, I think I would pretend a lot that he was my granddad so people didn't know. And what was it like, man? It was like, um... It was kind of sad, I think, because it made me angry at time. You know, it made me very, you know, if I look at it, part of it was sad because I, it made me angry at time. You know, it made me feel like time wasn't fair or it didn't do things fairly, mm. Right. you know? So it gave me like, it gave me a grudge against time, right? Maybe that sounds kind of crazy, but once you have a grudge against time, your whole perception gets altered because now you can have feelings towards uh, things that people normally wouldn't have feelings towards. Does that make any sense? Kinda? Like what? Give us an example. Just like, you don't usually hear maybe somebody think I have a grudge against time. No, it just seems strange, right? right? So I think as a kid, when I thought that, then it gave my... It gave my imagination like, oh, this is a way you could think of this, you know? So I think it kind of inspired my imagination in a weird way to like um, want to be more creative, you know? Yeah. So it, it was kind of a, ne it, it, I don't know if that makes any sense. No, it, no, it does make it sense. Does make I can't complete... explain it all because I don't know that all, I don't know, you know, I don't know all the words a lot of times. You know, a lot of times people, you know, like Rogan's great at knowing what he's thinking yeah. and saying it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm not that great at that. Right. Yeah. You know? but, but what's really interesting is your background, and you said you had a grudge against time. Does that mean like you realized life is finite, there's an end to it, so you had to make the most of every of every second because you saw that your dad was older? Is that kind of what you meant or is it? I think it may, I was just pissed at every the way things shook out, you know? Yeah. I was pissed at the way that time yeah. did things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. I was just like, oh, time, why do you do it like that? Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, and that made you want to sort of look at the world differently, okay. Yeah, I think it just gave my, I, I don't know. I think, you know, uh, having an old dad al alters a lot of things because, um, like for one, the way I communicate with other men, like I didn't, my dad wasn't around a lot. And so I never really learned how long to look at somebody in the eyes when I talked mm -hmm. to him, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that was like, tough for me to like adjust to over time, right, you right, know? Right, right, and it yeah. might seem like a strange thing or whatever. No, I know exactly yeah. what you mean. But you learn it from like, you know, doing it with your dad or whatever. So, you know, I think just little things like that, you know? Sure. Um, but yeah, I'm not trying to be melancholy or have any- No, 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 no. this is really no. interesting. And man. listen, uh, how did you get from, you, so you have this creative mind, you're, you're making jokes with people when you're a kid, you want to create a different, you, you're creating a different reality in your yeah, mind and all that. Yeah, I wanted that. to seem different. Like I didn't want people to see my background right. and where I'm from yeah. and think uh, that that's me. Right, I yeah. get it. And it is me like in some of my heart and some of my spirit, but it's not, I didn't choose it. Right. Of course. I don't like to be a part of things that I don't choose. That yeah. makes sense. Me neither. So how do you go from that to stand up? Um, well, stand up, you just, you, you're fully responsible. You know, they said it was the hardest thing to do. You know, I got out to Los Angeles and they're like, this is the hardest thing to do. And, um... I had done a television show in America, a reality show, right? Yeah. When I was younger. Okay. Today's a different kind of day for Theo. Like about the past month, 
I've seen like I'm in limbo, kind of like I'm like I'm between like lives, kind of like part ghost, part human. My father died uh, a couple years ago. Sorry to hear that. And then my mother actually lives down in Tucson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the age of 14, my mother emancipated me, like legally emancipated me, like signing the contract and everything that just says that I'm responsible for my own actions and whatnot. I mean, I think I was kind of a special kid growing up and I really, like I could use like a lot of affection. I needed a lot of attention. She couldn't do it. I mean, it's gonna be hard on me in the future, I think, because I don't really know how to care about somebody. Do you know what we're doing? <laughs> Clue less. <laughs> Wonder what kind of people did y'all think would be here? Like, are... Well, I knew they would be between 18 and 24, yeah. and I knew it was gonna be three girls and, and three, three guys. guys. Yeah. I got this dream that I got here, and everyone else was Japanese and didn't oh. speak a word of English. Japanese? I have a big. I can't deal with Asian people that much. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! We're all going to be Asian, and you were exactly. Be so You're gonna trouble. be like. I'm gonna be in trouble. I just have trouble. I've just had trouble dealing with them. Theo, he's 19. He's young. Um, he probably hasn't been around a lot of people of color. What in the hell is Theo? That's what I think people think of me when they first talk to me, get to know me. They don't really understand me. Because, I mean, a lot of times I don't even understand myself, you know? I'm surprised as other people are at some of the things that come into my head or some of the things that I think about. They just don't know me yet. You know, they don't need to jump on my case. I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not jumping on their case about anything. Whenever people meet me for the first time, they laugh at me or something like that, I mean, I, don't, I just don't understand it sometimes. I've always felt that I was different than other people in a way. I mean, we're in a group right now, but right now I'm, I'm totally alone. It's cool how life takes you different ways and whips you around like leaves in the wind. It's cool how life can just set you on a breeze and show you your country and have the most fun, you know, that you've maybe ever had and learn the most about yourself that you've ever learned. Yeah. Hey, 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 you sing your song, dude. Oh, yeah, sing the Lonely Song. It's, it's about time right now, dude. Well, I ain't got to hurry to get all fixed up. I got an extra space in the cab of my truck. All I have to do is just, like, strap on my seatbelt, keep it, you know, kind of loose, and just kind of enjoy the ride that we're going on. I'm just going to inhale everything and just, like, let it just marinate in my lungs. It's been nice, and it's going to get even better. I can only imagine. People, you know, always think it's ridiculous. It's bollocks or whatever. You say bollocks, right? Yeah, we do. It's bollocks. So, the he, show you did, yeah, okay. or it was it was a good, it was popular, right? Very popular, but it was just societal wise, you know, people just kind of pushed it off, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Even though now some of those shows are very popular and stuff, mm. yeah. And so people were, and I, and I kept hearing, oh, stand up comedy is the hardest thing to do. Mm. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna do that then, you know. I want to do the hardest thing that you have to do so that nobody can say that I'm, that I couldn't do, that I'm, so you couldn't associate me with anything else. I didn't want to be, because I'd been part of something that people were like, oh no, we don't like this. Right. I wanted to say, okay, well, if you're not going to like me, you're then you're going to have to not like me. Mm. Yeah. On my own, on my own. Wow. You know, and so I felt like stand up was the only way to do that because it's just, you know, it's just you. And it's just, there's no cheating, there's no nepotism or whatever. Or nepotism? Nepotism, no, you nepotism, said it right. Yeah. Nepotism. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's no nepot nepotism. Yeah. Your dad can't help you. Right. Yeah. You right. know, right. in front of a crowd. Yeah. On a Saturday no. night. Your dad can't fucking help you. He might be able to help you get you in the door. He yeah. can help. He can pack the audience a couple times, but as soon as it not. starts to show up on his, uh, too much on his invoices, he's going <laughs> to he's, he's gonna stop doing it, you know? Yes. And so that's what I like. There was no, I was in control over what you thought of me. Right. And it was totally up to me. And right. that finally seemed fair to me. Right. Because I think that life didn't honestly seem that fair before that to me. Now, that's just how I thought. And I don't think that, you know, I'm not trying to be a downer. No, not you know? at all. I think it just kind of, that's, I think that's honestly probably how I thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that I want you to, if you're going to say something about me, you're not going to be able to base it on anything but myself, you know? Right. Yeah. And so that felt to me felt pretty good. Stand up is very honest, right? When you're on that stage, you're either making people laugh or you're not. Yeah. 
That's it. And you're making people feel, or you're making them do something, but you're doing it, you know? And they're doing it too, you know? It's funny, sometimes I would rather be the person in the audience, you know? Really? I'm not good at it. You Really? Like, I'm not. how do you mean you'd rather be the person in the audience? Because they're having a blast, man. Yeah. You know? I'm having fun too, but I'm having to work and like do the stuff. But they just are having fun, you know? Uh -huh. I think sometimes I almost admired seeing that so much that if I wasn't able to easily be that person, then at least I could be a part of like creating that, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, anyway, sorry, it's a bit long winded. No, no. But tell me something about you guys, no. man. <laughs> no, genuinely, Fear, what you're saying is really interesting. And, yeah. and it's not long winded. You're going, you're, you're talking about yourself. You're to, and also, you're talking a little less than most of our guests, too. Yeah. Less than. Yeah. Less than. I told you, we, we normally do quite serious conversations, yeah. which is why we're asking you, because yeah. what we're interested in is you clearly have a brilliant mind for comedy, yeah. right? You do. Otherwise, you wouldn't be where you are. You right? wouldn't have it's had the success all yeah. that you've had. So what we're interested in is like, how do you think? How did you get there? How do you look at life? So this is all perfect. Okay. Yeah, because I didn't know exactly, so I didn't want to yeah. be doing no. something that was wrong. No, no, no nothing, nothing, nothing you're doing wrong. nothing that's wrong, man. Okay, cool, man. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, I guess that's how I think a lot about it, you know? I think, um, yeah, I think that's the an answer of that. Hey Francis, if you were a member of the public, would you like the opportunity to ask incredible guests like Bill Burr, Jordan Peterson, Sam Harris, Adam Carolla, Brett Weinstein, John Barnes, Douglas Murray, Nigel Farage and Lionel Shriver your own questions? You bet I would. And what do you think the best way to do that would be? Uh, probably stalking, mate. You'd have to corner them in the supermarket, probably run near like the sort of frozen food aisles, and then just bark questions at them before they, they can escape. Uh, not the American ones, as they have guns. And you'd have to be extra careful with the females, as that's how I got in trouble last time. Do you really imagine you're going to get Douglas Murray near the frozen food aisle? If you want to ask our incredible guest questions and have access to phenomenal behind-the-scenes content, then you have to be on our locals. That's right, for only $7 a month, you get incredible extra content behind the scenes footage, giveaways, and also the chance to be part of an incredible community where you can meet and hang out with like-minded people. You get access to our American vlogs as we travel across the country interviewing our heroes. An extra 20 minutes of our viral Sam Harris episode as he discusses his approach to COVID. We're also going to start doing giveaways of exclusive trigonometry merchandise like this, a poster from our Edinburgh show signed by both of us. And also a House of Lords teddy, which you can only get in the House of Lords, signed by the one and only Baroness Fox. Locals also gives you access to an incredible online community. You can share memes, talk about the latest episode, or even make a new friend. Well, just one. Exactly, more than both of us have, really. People are now doing meetups in their city because they love locals. In fact, some people enjoy it so much, they prefer it over the show. They prefer locals to trigonometry. If I have to get them executed, I'm the one that goes to jail. Right, go to trigonometry.locals.com. Only $7 a month for all that incredible content trigonometry.locals.com. See you there, guys. We referenced it at the start of the interview. One of my, our favorite routines of yours is the white privilege routine. It's brilliant. Yeah. It's brilliant. And, and I think the reason it hits is, look, it's wonderfully funny. Let's just say that first of all. But I think the reason it hits is because you're telling the truth. Yeah. So how did step us, guide us through, how did, you, how did you make that happen? How did you? St well, they didn't like, you know, sometimes like poor, poor white people get left out of like the, the poverty conversation, I feel like sometimes maybe. It's hard to like, it's kind of shit. Sometimes you're like, if you're white, right? And I'm Polish and Nicaraguan, right? And, but if you are white or looked at as a white, you know, whitey, honky, wiggers, whatever they call them, you know. Um, I don't know what they call them in, what do you guys call them? Chavs. Chavs, chavs. Yeah. yeah. Couple fucking, you know, little chavs, right? Yeah. At AR. Um, <laughs> if you are chavs, 
or just regular white people, poor white people, mm -hmm. then yeah, I felt like a lot of times um, when people think of like poor, they think of just uh, ethnicities first a lot yeah. of times, you know? Right. And so, and you always feel bad anyway because white people, you're just supposed to have money, right? So yeah. automatically out of the gate, you're like, how <laughs> the fuck do we not have <laughs> a little bit more money than this, right? <laughs> right, right? If you've right. had a couple generations and you've shown up in the, you know, in the correct uniform, yeah. how would you not have a bit more of a, you know, treasure chest, yeah. to, you know, yeah. but but you know, that's what you get born into and so that's that. And uh and yeah, it kind of feels like you don't really get a voice sometimes, you know. Um and then yeah, so I think that was part of my thing. It was like I'm I ride the same bus as the poor black kids, the poor, we only had black and white in our town. Yeah. But like, you know, when people think of, um, when people think of, yeah, helping like, sometimes they, they would miss us, you know? Mm. It would feel like sometimes. And now also, maybe that's just a feeling and maybe that's not even the reality, but it was my perception sometimes, you know? I wasn't angry at black people for it. I just was like, well, this is my truth, you know? Right. And sometimes yeah. it feels like uh, they don't know where to put that truth in like a mainstream space. Right. It doesn't fit that if you're not, if you're poor and white and not a racist person or, you know, somebody who's mating with their, you know, siblings or whatever, <laughs> then you, um, they don't, it's almost like, yeah, we're, yeah, like you don't exist, but you do. Right. And there's a lot of you, you know. Yeah. And, and that's really interesting because, you know, whenever like you see people in the UK, like comedians do like what they would call a racist voice, they would use your accent. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, and immediately you're just stigmatizing a whole load of people, the vast majority of whom are nice and decent and whatever else. Yeah. Yeah, that was always crazy. Yeah, I mean, that was really rough during like a lot of um, when the Trump and Hillary, I think it was, I don't yep. know if that was the right. campaign, but yeah. one of the campaigns, it was like everybody just started really, the last people that Hollywood was, a, or like, and I don't know if it's just Hollywood, the last people that really anybody felt safe to make fun of in like mainstream media felt like um, poor white people. Mm. You know? Yeah. Like we did it all. <laughs> 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 if we did it all, we'd have fucking done it differently. Yeah. I mean, we'd have something to show for it, you know? So I think that, yeah, that shit, yeah, but that was the only one you could pick on. Mm -hmm. So I think it's brave if somebody tries to pick on somebody else, you know? Mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit braver. And I like that. That's one of the things that's always kind of kept me wanting to stay in the game is like how how close to the middle of that tightrope can I get, you know? Right. Um, so you like getting close to the line and feeling a bit of that heat there? Yeah, dude. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, I don't like to pretend that I'm like a fancy person or that I've never done things wrong or anything like that. I've, you know, I'm, not, I'm far from anything. I'm just a regular person, you know, just trying their best or whatever, I don't know. But like... I never, you know, I never, what was the question again? I was talking about getting close to the no, line. We were right? talking about the edge. Oh yeah, I yeah. wish that they would fucking, you know, I wish that if everybody was more cool then I think the line would be, it would be a lot more fun, you know? So you feel restricted? Let me think. Do you feel like there's jokes that you want to do that you're worried about doing? Is that what you mean? Yeah, man, yeah, I do. But also, I think you gotta be also like crafty. Yeah. You yeah, know, like yeah. if I hear something that's just like racist or yeah, just of yeah. retarded, like that shit makes me mad. But yeah. if you have something that is creative, then that always should be able to at least be admired in some way, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah. But now, yeah, it's a little bit more cagey. What's it like in your country? A lot yeah, worse. A lot really? worse, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so comedians have been arrested for jokes. We've had investigations by the police 
into into comedians telling jokes. Right. What? Someone told the joke and the police turn up and go, explain that joke to us. What if you tickle someone? <laughs> <laughs> that's harassment. Bro. Yeah, that's sexual assault. Bro. Oh yeah. But yeah, but that, that's where we are in, in, in the UK, man. Damn, bro. Y'all got to get out, dude. <laughs> get another boat. We'll send the boat back over. <laughs> Tell me about it. Tell but me there's about nowhere it. other, there's nowhere new place to go now, you know? Yeah. Because I thought a lot of people were going to come back to you guys in a boat. Yeah. Really? You know? you I thought, thought we were going to, yeah. How come? Just because it like, you know, I thought people would be like, all right, we're out, you know? Uh-huh. We're yeah. going uh-huh. to scoot on out, you yeah. know? Yeah. But it's interesting, isn't it? Because America is sort of the land of the free, right? You're supposed to be able to say whatever the hell you want, make the jokes, et cetera. But you don't feel that that's the situation now? Well, I think it used to be, but now like the moderate, uh, I feel like that's the situation. You can still, I don't really, I don't get too scared. If you have a crowd, you can go to the audience and yeah. you can do what you want. Yes. You know? Yes. So they are more, you know, that's a little more normal. I think if you're just trying to like come up and learn in the clubs, I bet it's it, it could feel more restricted. Right. That's yeah. what I always say as well. Like the Thea Vaughns and the Bill Burrs and the Joe Rogans, there's no problem with yeah. for them. But as you, if you're coming up to the clubs, it's really, really a lot tighter, you know? I think probably for, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's definitely been like, uh, you know, it's been a very, I don't know if it's been like a pro-black time in Hollywood, kind of, you know, and in comedy and stuff like that. Um, it's pro-diversity, it's, right? Yeah. Yeah, pro-diversity probably. So that's probably a better way to say it, you know? Yeah. I think I also think a lot of times of, with diversity of black and white just because that's all I grew up with. Yeah. yeah that's all we had growing yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. But, um, and so maybe I, I didn't ever know, maybe there were a lot more white people in comedy. I don't rem- I never super remembered it that way, but maybe it was, you know? I mean, my favorite comics were like Richard Pryor and Chris Rock are probably my favorites. Um, this guy, Fahim Anwar. Um, so I don't know if maybe there were, maybe there was like a racial ceiling. I'm sure there used to be, because mm-hmm. there used to be one on everything. Right. Yeah. Women the same, right? Yeah. So I think you want to have some different, you know, I think there's also the thought of like, well, this ethnicity, this skin color has had its time. Now it's time for mm-hmm. other yeah. skin colors. So, and some of that you almost have to think, well, fucking... Maybe that's how time played it out, you know? It's like, I don't, you know, I don't know what time's big plan is at the end, so it's hard to really get a full breadth of it, you know, by just attaching myself to the moment that I'm in, even though it may feel uncomfortable at times, you know, and I may get pissed, like, oh, shit, you know? But um, but me personally, you know, I feel like I'm just, you know, I'm doing okay, and I'm... Um, you know, I'm doing my, you know, I feel like I'm trying to connect where I can with people and uh, I don't know. I don't know what else to say right now. Theo, do you ever feel like, do you ever worried, are you ever worried that someone will look over one of your old bits and go, oh, that's a bit naughty and then try and start something or cancel you? Do you know what I mean? Do you, do you ever yeah. worry about that? Yeah, I do sometimes. I think everybody listens to their old stuff though and is kind of unimpressed by it in some ways yeah. because you've evol- you're evolving. Or- yeah, unimpressed is different though, brother, because if, if you are unimpressed, if I'm unimpressed with something you've done, I'm not going to come after you and try and ruin your career, right? But for some people, if that's what I think he's getting at, which is like, are you worried that people, you know, you said the wrong thing, which wasn't even the wrong thing back then and now it is and people are going to come after you or is that not a concern for you? I don't, I don't think it's not a concern, but I think, I don't think anybody could realistically look at me and think that I've never said the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I know what you're saying. <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> you know? Right. I was, yeah, I mean, I was raised in the breadth of the wrong thing, you know, so... <laughs> I've heard all of its songs, you yeah. know? Right. Um, but... Do you think that makes you a better comic, Theo? Like, in the UK, we've got this generation of very, like, rich, posh, middle class, you know, uh, went to Oxford and Cambridge. You know, they're very smart comedians. Do you sometimes think that the way you grew up, the fact you come from such a poor background, do you think that just makes you funnier, that adversity, that stuff you came through? 
Um, yeah, I think it get well. Yeah, you gotta have more. The worst shit is the thing you know when the wor- If you don't have any, and this wasn't us, but this is just like a hypothetical thing. If you don't have any, like. Like laughter will keep you warm, you know? It's like, so if you don't have anything, poor people sit around, they're more connected, you know? Uh, There's not as much sheltering from the world. There's not any like hedges or any gates. All your shit's hanging out the window. It's like, so you're more like, um, things just are a lot more real. Right. It's hard to hide. Being poor is pretty hard to hide, Mm -hmm. you know? And so, yeah, and poor people are outdoors more. They just hang out outside more. And so you, you're you talking with people and laughing. People are going to want to laugh, so you start laughing more. Um, so that's, I think a lot of that just makes sense. Like, we hung outside a lot, you know. Maybe just as kids, but also parents were out there smoking, and they had some people were, um, what do you call it, pedophiles? <laughs> and they had... Um, you know, people, they'd have pedophiles out there trying to fucking hang out with you and shit. And so, like, everybody's milling around, and it's just like it's a good soup to fucking, you know, make dumplings out of, you know? So it's a good soup to make humor out of, you know, mm, really. Yeah. Because when you got everything right there, all the ingredients, it's just, it's a great time to pull jokes, you know? So I miss, I, that's some of the stuff that I miss, is just the reality was right there all the time, you know? Yeah. And it's fun. That was funny. Yeah. Uh, that was fun. Yeah. And does does the life of stand-up, does that make you happy? You enjoy it? Well, it's interesting because it gets pretty lonesome as it, you get more successful in some ways. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it does. It gets pretty lonesome, I think, in some ways. Um, like, give us an example. Well, like, you go to the audience now, if you have a bigger audience, right? You go there to a theater. And you go out and they come in from this way and you come in from the back and you kind of meet along this line at the stage and there's not really any co-mingling. And then you both go your separate ways, you know? Mm -hmm. Whereas I think with the clubs, it used to feel a little bit more like involved and you and your buddies were always there together. But once you kind of go out touring and, you know, kind of make your way and find your success in it, which is awesome, you, uh, you kind of have to be, it's not lonely, but you, a lot of that is time you know, with just you. So I think you have to learn to bring like your mates along and your femates or whatever. <laughs> and um, whatever, uh, you know, if you bring animal or whatever, if you bring, you know, snacks or animals or whatever. Some people bring a lot Same of stuff. Same thing, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> I that, guess, man. But that's interesting. Yeah, it's it's been interesting, man. I yeah. guess. I don't know what we're supposed to be talking about exactly. There, there is nothing that we're supposed okay, to be good. talking. We're just having a conversation, man. Yeah. yeah. Is this? But is this you guys are like detectives, huh? <laughs> yeah. Do we feel like detectives? A little bit. A little bit. Is this uncomfortable for you? No, I don't think so. I don't know. So, but I don't feel like it is that much. Maybe some moments. Okay. Yeah. You know? But that. But what we're trying to get to the heart, I, I guess, and we're trying to understand, Theo, is just like what look, makes you tick. What makes you tick? The way you work. Yeah, and what, like, I guess, yeah, I mean, you guys are kind of like, um, it's like uh, unfairness hunters, maybe. Does it feel like that? Is that what you think? Yeah. Yeah, how so? Like unfairness hunters. Like you hunt down things that seem unfair. You know what? That's a good description. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Is it fair or no? I think that's a fair description. Yeah. yeah, I like that. I like things to try and be fair, you know? Yeah. And it's hard to equivocate that or figure that out, you yeah. know? Right. It's hard to figure it out. So I think you have to have people that are hot on the case, you know? That's a good description. That's a really, really good description, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and we're not trying to start any shit. I'm just, we're just curious about how people see the world. And from our perspective, we, you know, we, we both come from backgrounds where we feel fairness is important. People mm-hmm. not being mistreated is important. You know, people not being picked on the, because of the way they grew up or what their skin color is or whatever. Yeah. You know, either way, black or white, doesn't really matter, right? Um, yeah, it was, t- yeah, I mean, like, there's never, like, the, when it came to, like, black, white stuff, it always felt like it was the white person's fault, even if right. you felt like, you know, because 
the in our town, black people were having a tougher time overall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so, um, you know, a lot of times I felt like they got the benefit of the doubt from people, mm -hmm. maybe from authorities and stuff they right. didn't. I don't know what, you know, that's like. I just have only been just me. Um, that's interesting that you say that because like in the UK, like we talk a lot about like white privilege. And look, if you've if you've come from money and you and you're white, you're definitely privileged. But there's loads of places in the UK which is just like the places that you grew up in, like where these people legitimately have nothing. They've got nothing, you know, and every day for them is a struggle. And then for people to come along and go, you're privileged, to me, that's, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> You know? Right. Well, yeah, it's crazy. You're like, oh, uh, well, if I am, at least give me some of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's crazy, man. I think, but also it's like a lot of the people that say that, they, they've they never, they're not from those places. No. They've never been there. They don't yeah. know what it's like, you know? A lot of people like in like, in Los Angeles, you know, a lot in some of the community, they... They didn't know what to even, none of them could even relate to anything I was talking about because they just didn't know it, you know? Mm -hmm. They were all, like, it was mostly people from uh, New York or L.A. or Boston, you know, and it was more like uh, just from a different kind of class of society right, sometimes. Right. Yeah. Not always, but maybe that's going to start changing too, I think, if there's less, uh, if a lot of, like, that overtly woke programming kind of goes numb eventually that will have to evolve because I don't think that the entertainment industry really has any couth. I don't know if that's the word or not. What does that mean? Yeah. I don't know what it means. I don't know, you know what, what it, it means, means man. He doesn't yeah. know what it, it means. It might not even be a word. It doesn't have, do you mean like clout? Do you mean like the entertainment industry is dying for you? No, I think, but they don't have any real like, moral compass, I don't think. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Or maybe that's not it. That's fucking crazy. No, dude. no, no. They, to, to talk about that some more. That's interesting. But they, well, no, no, this is what it is. They just follow where the money goes. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Okay. So, so I today think- today it's woke, we go this way. Tomorrow it's not woke, we go that way. Right. And sometimes the rest of us, I feel like, get played. I don't know if we get played. It's almost like we're all just chasing this tail. And I don't know how it got started, but it's like, because no, they're just doing it, or whoever they are, this <laughs> hypothetical they, right. mm -hmm. are just doing it just to get, uh, you know, they just want us to, like, they're just, they're just doing it to create a trend or to make money or to do whatever. Our reaction to it also becomes its own business in a way. It's all bizarre. I'm not smart enough to know. No, but that's just, that is a very smart point you know, that you yeah. just made. Yeah. And then, I don't think it is. I do. Yeah. You know. Well, I don't even know what the point is. <laughs> <laughs> to be real honest with you. Yeah. yeah. No, but that was a good, that was a great point. You know, the fact that that is its own industry and then the reaction to the thing is its own industry as well. And, you know, and it, it, that creates jobs and money so that everybody is in their interest to keep this shit going. Right. In a weird way. Yeah. Yeah. It's what it all is. And then in the end, it's entertainment. So it's like, what can we really even say but that we were entertained, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's painful sometimes. Some of the entertainment can, you know, it can be painful or it can hurt your feelings. But, um, but yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know also what it feels like to be a different ethnicity in America. I don't know what a lot of that feels like. So it's really tough to say things. Uh, but I shouldn't feel ashamed to be able to also say what my own experience was like. Right. No, not and, at all. And, and, yeah, and, I agree and, with that. Yeah. yeah. So it's interesting. It's been an interesting line to walk. It was it was definitely tough though when people were making fun of just like we were the I was like my place where I was from was like the last scapegoat, you know? Yeah. And then they ran out or or they'll just <laughs> keep using that one, you know. Yeah. But Hey Francis, what do you think is the best way to advertise a business? That's easy. All you need to do is spend shed loads of cash on an advert that's going to be promoted on a dying medium like TV. Then simply sit back and watch all your hard-earned money disappear down the toilet. What about advertising with trigonometry? 
Why would I do that when I can advertise on ITV3 for the measly sum of 20 grand and be watched by six people? Because Trigonometry now has over 350,000 subscribers across the different platforms and gets 2 million views and downloads a month. That's right. You can place an advert with us and we'll promote your brand on one of our episodes. Your advert will be written by two professional comedians. Yeah, that's right. We're hiring two professional comedians. <laughs> Where we make our ads funny and engaging to the point where some people say the ads are their favourite parts of the show. Yeah, we probably shouldn't admit that, mate. All you need to do is contact us on marketing at triggerpod.co.uk. That's marketing at triggerpod.co.uk. Advertise with us and we'll get your business cancelled. And what is that like when you just see people all the time like go towards like the butt of the joke, the butt of the joke, you're the butt of the joke. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think I didn't take it personally, but I took it personally for the people from where I'm from. Yeah. yeah. You know? And I guess maybe I did take it personally some, like, uh... Yeah, I would see... I would see comics say, like, all these white motherfuckers and just things that was just like, if I ever said that about somebody else, it would be... Right. Yeah. You know? That's 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 why I you know I I some people think I'm white some people think I'm not white and that was one of the reasons we started the show because I saw this happening like people were just using it as like a uh a thing that you can just use like that you know Yeah and it's crazy because if something happens to another you know it's never a racial thing when it happens to a white person but if it happens to a black person it feels more racial more often yeah. Yeah. but then that's also ju I can't tell if that's real sometimes or if that's just my Right and there's a terrible history there yeah. right as well yeah, that we're totally. all responding to Yeah so it's like yeah and that's where I think yeah those people a lot of those people were probably mad at time just like I was you know probably yeah. had a grudge against it in some yeah. ways Well um, Theo uh <laughs> we're done <laughs> <laughs> You're happy we're done. Oh, I don't even know if we are. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say, uh, we uh, we ask a couple of questions from our supporters uh, once the interview is over. But okay. uh, thank you for your time. I hope it wasn't too uncomfortable for you, man. It's just uh, we like to find out what, what makes people tick, what they think. And you you probably don't think this, but you've got a very interesting perspective on life that most people don't not only have, but they never get to hear on, on, the, on the screen. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess I do, man. I don't know, man. I mean, I don't know. I, 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 I try. Sometimes I wish I serviced my own uh, opinions better. What do you, you mean ever by feel that, that way? How, how do you mean, Theo? Do you mean like you, you communicate them better or? Yeah, or just, I, yeah, I sometimes wish that I could service them better even within entertainment, you know, or within like my stand up and stuff. It does feel, I guess, a little sometimes restrictive, you know? Um, you know, or it's just tough to navigate. Yeah, yeah. But, but then in my life, man, nothing's ever really been fucking easy, you know? Uh -huh. And I probably wouldn't like it if it was, honestly. How come? I don't know. I just don't think I would take to it, really, if something were real easy. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. You like the hard stuff, you seek it out. I don't know if I like it, but I just think that it, be I think that becomes like a, right. it becomes what it feels, it becomes common enough for you. I don't know if you trust it more. I don't know. But they say nothing, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about, but. No, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. So Thea, last question we ask, and this is going to sound funny given what you've just said, is what's the one thing, when, not when, bad, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Been a long day, dude. You ask him the question. Yeah, man. okay. So, Theo, the last question yeah. we always ask is, what's right, the thing... Look one time. Is this mirror? This is a good mirror? Yeah, it is a good mirror. Did this chain be out the whole time? <laughs> oh, no, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's the one thing we're not talking about that we really should be? Mmm... I think they, oh, dude, I remember one time I saw these f massive birds, right? They call them in your yeah, country, they call massive birds. birds, beautiful, strong. <laughs> uh, I swear, bro, I went to this, I went to this place called Newcastle. Have you heard of this? Yes, yes. yeah, we've okay. heard of Newcastle. And this taxi drops me off 
and there was these, it was like a part, like a, I don't know if it was, looked like a bachelorette party or something. And, the, and this foyer of like a big, there was a big room, like a big window, and they were in there naked, mm-hmm. you know. What do you call it? Tits? Yes. Yes. Tits. And they were beating each other with pillows in there, bro. And I sat out there and watched, smoked a cigarette out there. Right out there, And boy. that's the one thing no one's <laughs> talking about. Huh? And that's the one thing bro, no one's talking about. there was seven of these women in there. <laughs> I can see why you brought it up. It's, <laughs> yeah. a, it's an and important point, And it was fucking, there. it was serious, man. Oh. That was fantastic. Well, Theo. <laughs> it was serious, bro. See, I can't even do it justice because you can't even believe that it could happen, could you? <laughs> How, who would get seven women naked and have them pillow fight in front of a big, huge picture window? It's almost like they wanted to be seen, Theo. I don't know, man. That's fucking, that's beautiful, bro. It's good shit, man. All right. So well, where are you guys headed next, man? Uh, we're going to see the comedy show that you're part of. Oh, shit, man. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, listen, thanks for coming on, Thea. Where can people find you online? Where do they follow you? Do, Just do... find me online, man. Um, Are you on tour? Nope, not right now. I'll probably get back over there to the UK at some point, though. Yeah. All right. I want to come to Welsh. I want to come to Scotland again. I want to come to... Um, Ireland? Stonehenge. Do people play Stonehenge? Yes. Yeah. Hell yeah. Not played Stonehenge. Yeah. I've been to Stonehenge. You've played... What do you mean played Stonehenge? I want to play it. Do people ever play it? Do a show there? Stonehenge? Yeah. <laughs> No. I want to fucking play it, boy. <laughs> you see, that's what made you that attitude. That, that's I, it. I've never met anyone. You want it tough. No one's ever played Stonehenge? Yeah. No, man. It's a historical <laughs> monument that yeah. you can't... Yeah. What are you talking about, man? You see? We got to play di- it, Bob. See, that's the mentality that makes you Theo Von. Yeah. Uh, that's the difference between an American and a Brit. A Brit will look at that and go, that's, that's an ancient monument. An American will be like... Yeah, I could feel this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that'd be wild, dude. Yeah, I got to get over there, man, and see what's going on more and get a little bit more intel on you guys, man. But, I'm, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm... All right, let it. us know when you're over. We'll look after you. Yeah, man, we'll take you out. All right, Theo, a couple of quick questions from my locals, then we'll let you go. All right. All right. We didn't even have any British kids. We had some guy with, like... Not like a lisp or something, but something had happened to him. He'd gotten hit in the jaw real good. <laughs> and, he's, and people thought he was British all the time. Well, because he had a speech impediment. Yeah, this is going to make a, a great behind the scenes bit. <laughs> they called him a queer all the time. And they said he was British and stuff, but he just had a speech impediment, yeah. 